So far, my track record for Neptunia limited editions is pretty good. For North American releases, I've got a complete collection except for Rebirth 1, which was limited to a thousand copies. And then it ended up being insta sold out. One thing they all have in common, other than being Neptunia games of course, is that they're also all for PlayStation consoles. This copy of Super Neptunia RPG is the first one that breaks that trend. Not only in my collection, but it's the first Neptunia game or Neptunia limited edition that is also available for something other than a Sony system. Unless you count that uh, Rebirth Trilogy uh, thing for Steam. Well, I guess that counts, doesn't it? Anyways, whatever. But you can get a PS4 version of Super Neptunia RPG as well. Wait a second, that's not the Switch game I ordered. I was sent the wrong version. Anyway, I already talked to Idea Factory and it's been dealt with. I've always had good interactions with them. The difference between the two limited editions is only the game case and the included steel case. I also have a Switch code of Super Neptunia RPG to give away, courtesy of Idea Factory. Not only were they kind enough to do that, they also provided me with the uh, codes for the other versions of the games. So I can do a review and a comparison video, which will come out in the near future. To enter the Switch giveaway, check the description or pinned comment for all the details. And just so you know, it's a North American Switch code. This is the first video with my new dedicated recording desk. I'm still figuring out lighting, but things should look less gloomy and doomy now compared to my computer desk, which is like a black tabletop, so uh, the YouTube compression wasn't really too kind to it. This is the box, a first for Neptunia LEs. There's no neppage or any CPU on the box at all. Technically, the box is histy, though I don't think she's this fat in the game. It was a bit of a surprise since the website never showed any pictures of this at all. At first I thought the box was damaged, but I now think it's actually part of the design. There's these white spots that look a bit worn, but it's I guess just supposed to look old. However, there is damage to one of the hinge flaps. There's like a tear, but it kind of blends into the aesthetics, so I'm not going to be upset over that. I do have a beef with this big box, which I'm going to mention at the end. Inside the box is another box. This is the most exciting bit here, the white structural cardboard support. Not quite up there with the air-filled plastic from the Disgaea 4 Limited Edition, but a thrill no less. Underneath is a very flat Pudingo. He does get jumped on a lot in the game, so that's understandable. You can see I didn't even notice that this wasn't the Switch version at first. I'm just so used to seeing the PlayStation branding on Neptunia games, I guess. A deck of cards is included, just like the good old days when Nisa was the publisher. This is the second box. Here we get the characters in their CPU form with the game's logo. It's a great design. There's a sense of movement and overall it's got a look we haven't seen before. The box has a matte finish, which gives me goosebumps when I touch it. Look but don't touch is the saying that goes well here. I'm also slightly worried that the matte finish will get marred by something since it's a thing that can happen. The back has Podingo just chilling out in one of the game's levels or something. Once you open up the box, you can see some design on these sides. Each one has a different CPU, which is a neat detail. That's the sort of thing I like to see. Shows that they've put some thought into this. The first item in the box small is the steel game case. It's quite metal. It's so shiny, it's like they wanted to show you how extremely metal it is. When I say extremely metal, I don't mean like behemoth or cryptopsy. <laughs> sort of metal. You know what I mean. The design has some noteworthy points I want to bring up. I like the diagonal lines that the purple bits make across the screen. I also like how the characters seem to pop out of the image by being in front of the purple sections in parts. The back is similar in that regard too. There's a sort of three-dimensional quality to the steel case that I haven't seen with any other Neptunia LE accessory. It's like there's actual distance between the various elements. Kind of ironic for a 2D game. Next up, it's the soundtrack. The logo is on here with some sort of mystical imagery as the background. You know, the sort of background images you see in the game. The borders fit really well. They really used Histi's ornamental bits to their full advantage. That sounds kind of rude, jeez. I like the use of the game's artwork on the inside sleeves and CDs. They're the best looking background images of any Neptunia game, so they should be used whenever possible. For some reason, there's some residue on the front plastic cover. It looks like some sort of adhesive, maybe from the shrink wrapping. I think the music is really good. It fits so well. Uh, it's totally different from the other games, though, you know, I guess 
You could say there's some similarities to Four Goddesses Online because of, you know, the use of classical instruments and that sort of thing. But for the series, it's definitely unique. And there's some really lovely sounding pieces in there too. There's a really nice range of tunes all the way from calm to exciting. The art book is hardcover and well-sized, no problems with the quality, or for the course when it comes to that. You've got your usual character showcases, but what I like is that there's a bit of insight on how they went about animating the characters. Things that explain part of the creative process are always welcome. I already said how I like the art in this game, so just because of that I think this art book stands out from other ones in the series. We kind of went about this in a roundabout way by looking at things from Box Small first. That's okay, let's take a look at the other items from Box Big. The game, that's something that exists. Nice cover art. It certainly has a unique style that the other NEP games don't have. The back is alright. The screenshots are a bit small, which is a shame. It would have been nice if they managed to make them more prominent. But things always get difficult when there's more than one language involved. The text takes up so much space. Inside we find the disc and even a color, well, kind of manual. It has the controls listed inside it. The back tells you how to start the PS4 and the game, which is pretty funny. I think if you can't start a PS4 game, then you probably wouldn't be able to make your way into this box either. But it's nice to have some sort of color literature. I guess we'll see what the Switch game includes once I get it. There's some reversible cover art. As you can see, it matches box small. But instead of the black border, it's purple here, which is an interesting choice. In a way, I think the border is too close in color to the blue of the PlayStation branding, so it looks a bit odd. Probably looks better on the Switch. That's the only time you'll ever hear that sentence. Let's look at the deck of cards. The box has a matte finish, but it's not like the small box or the collector's edition box, because uh, it's more of like a smooth and soft finish rather than... Uh, the weird goosebumpy feeling, you know, where it feels like a MacBook Pro or something. The game cover is on the front, or maybe this is the back. The back front has the now very familiar Histoire book look. I had trouble undoing the flat without damaging the thing. It's so tight-fitting for some reason. The character sprites are used for the face cards, which is cool. Like I said before, it's kind of a nice throwback to the Nisa days. Not sure if that was intentional or not, but that's what I think of. The cards have a semi-gloss finish. I didn't show it in the video, but the back design is the Histy book design. The last item in the package is the Pedingo plushie. Because you jump on him in the game to reach higher places, I find it funny how squished you can make him look. I think it's because the plushie has like very small beads inside of it as stuffing. You can squish it in every which way and it just kind of retains its shape. It's alright, I suppose. It's slightly more amusing than I thought it'd be. But if you've watched previous unboxings, you'll know that I usually prefer some other accessory or a piece of merch over a plushie. At least it fits in the box, unlike Umio, who I have to hide behind the LE box so I never have to see him. That's the limited edition of Super Neptunia RPG, a strangely short title for a Neptunia game. I like the various things it comes with, and the art direction and style is quite unique compared to others in the series. I really like the look. The thing is, I also really like the actual collector's box. The small box with Neptune and Co. on it. But it doesn't house all of the items, which is a bit of a problem when I want to display it. I could take it out of the big box, which I'm now calling Fat Histy, and place it out front, essentially concealing the big box. But the fact that there's a collector's box sized hole inside the big box just makes me feel like I'm wasting space on a shelf that is already totally full of every North American Neptunia LE in existence except for Rebirth 1. I could also just display the collector's box on its own, but I don't like splitting up the LE and storing parts of it somewhere else. If I displayed the collector's box with the game cards and plushie, well, that would take up even more space. But going with that option means I just have an empty box laying around somewhere else. And no, before someone suggests this, I'm not throwing Fat Histy away. That's part of the LE. It would have been nice if they had the cool limited edition art on the big box. I have an entire bookshelf dedicated to Neptunia limited editions, and this is the most boring looking thing here. Which is ironic since it has one of my favorite designs concealed inside it. It'll probably end up somewhere in the back where it can't be seen since there's more exciting things to look at. A bit of a downer ending to a video about an LE I think generally looks really nice and stands out in many ways, but that's how I feel. 
I wish they came up with a box that houses all of the content and has some nice art on it. Like always, thank you to all the Patreon subscribers. I appreciate your continued support. Check out the Patreon page if you want to get behind the scenes news on what I'm working on, early access to videos, and your name on the end card. I also have a second channel where I do more casual, non-scripted videos, usually on anime game news that interests me. Also check out the Discord server. I haven't really mentioned it in a long time, but I am mentioning it now, so there you go. Everything else you can see in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video.